So let's make an iOS app. So I'll be showing how to get started making an app that can draw graphics and use animation and touch input. To write an iOS app, we'll be using Xcode, which is a program from Apple. You can install it for free. Just look for it in the App Store. But it's about a five gigabyte download, so it may take a while to download and install. So if you don't have it yet, uh, go get that and come back when you have it installed. So now let's open up Xcode, and then we'll create a new project. We're going to make an iOS single view application. That's the simplest template for us to use. Then it wants us to give our app a name. And then also make sure the language is Objective-C. Now it's asking where I want to save the project. So I'm just going to put mine on my desktop, but you could pick anywhere else you want. And then we can ignore this warning. This is for something called Git, which is a way to keep track of changes to your project over time. But we're not going to use that today, so we can ignore this message. So let's run it now. We can pick from a list of what type of device we want to simulate. I'm going to use the default, which is the iPhone 6 and then just hit the play button. So when your simulator comes up, it might be a huge window, depending on what kind of screen you have. So if it's too big or too small, you can change it in the menu, in Window, Scale, and I'm scaling mine to 50% because my screen is so small. So to make our app, we're going to create something called a UI view which is some code that can draw on the screen. So to make it, I'm going to right click on the demo game folder and choose new file and then make an iOS source and Cocoa touch class. So here we give our view a name. I'll call mine demo game view. And we're going to have to make this a subclass of UI view. So type that in if it's not there already. And then also you should make sure the language is Objective-C again. So this next screen is asking where to save the file. It should have everything correct by default. And here's the code. So they give us some example code here, but it's marked to be ignored. So we need to fix that first. So to do that, we're going to delete these two lines, this one that says slash star, and this other one down here that says star slash. And now we're going to add our drawing code right here where they tell us to. So here's what we need to draw a rectangle. It's CG context ref CTX equals UI graphics get current context parentheses and then a semicolon at the end. So this line we only need once, no matter how much stuff we draw later. It just kind of initializes the drawing. Then we're going to pick a color. So I'm going to say square bracket, UI color, blue color, closing square bracket, space, set fill, and another closing square bracket, and then a semicolon at the end. And then we'll draw. So CG context fill rect is the command. Then parentheses, CTX, and then you can use tab to jump between these parameters. So tab, CG rect make, parenthesis, and then it wants four numbers here. It wants a horizontal and vertical position for the rectangle, and then the width and height of the rectangle. So I'm going to use 10, 10, 100, 100. It's my favorite rectangle. And oh yeah, and then a semicolon at the end. So now that we've written the first draft of our drawing code, there's one more step we have to do before we can see what we've made. So we have to tell the app to show our demo game view when it starts up. Otherwise, it'll just keep showing the same old boring white view that it was showing. So we need to open up this main.storyboard file. Then Depending on what your computer does, you might need to click this button in the bottom right to open this left panel that says View Controller Scene. So I'm going to open this up and go inside View Controller and then select View. 
and we're going to change this to be our demo game view instead. So in this right panel, I'll change class to demo game view. And if you don't see this field, you might need to click these buttons. So now we can run it. And there we see our demo game view drawing a blue rectangle. So great. Let's add one more shape. Let's use a nice green color. So I could say UI color green color, like we did for blue, but I want a different shade of green than what that's going to give me. So let me show how to choose any color you want. So I'm going to say square bracket UI color, color with hue, and hit enter on this big thing. So this wants four numbers, a hue, saturation, brightness, and alpha. So to get those, I'm going to go to my web browser and search for HSB color picker. The HSB is for hue, saturation, brightness. And I'm going to find a tool that'll help me out here. So here's the green I want. So the numbers are 117, 52, 71. 117, 52, 71. Okay, but in iOS, all those numbers we're putting here are supposed to be between 0 and 1, so we have to divide these. So we need to divide the hue by 360.0 and the others by 100.0. And the dot zero is important here. Um, doing division without it will actually do a different kind of division from what you're expecting. So trust me, you need the dot zeros here. And this last number is alpha, which means how transparent something is. So normally you'll probably want 1.0, which means it's completely opaque, but you can try other numbers out and you'll get kind of a transparent drawing on top of whatever's there. And then to draw the ellipse, we'll say CG context fill ellipse in rect, and then parentheses, CTX tab, CG make rect, parentheses, and then X position, Y position, width and height, just like for the rectangle we did before. Oh yeah, and then a semicolon at the end. So let's run it. Oops, I messed up. Uh, what's wrong here? Oh, I forgot to say uh, set fill when changing my color. Okay, now let's run it. Ta-da! All right, so here's how we can make things move around on the screen. For any of these numbers we've put in here, we can change them to what's called a variable, which is basically a place where we can store a number, and then we can change that number over time while the app is running. So let me show what this looks like. First, we have to go to this other file, demogameview.h, and in here, between the at interface and the at end, we're going to put at property CG float. That means a number. And then the name we want to use for the variable, I'll call mine ellipse X, which will be for the horizontal position of the ellipse, but I could really call it almost anything. And then I'll make another one called ellipse Y. Okay, now back to demo game.m. We need to give these variables initial values, and that needs to go in an init method, but we don't have one yet, so let's create it. So I'll put this right after the at implementation line. So type a dash, and then start typing init with coder, and then select it from the menu, and then put a curly brace. And then there's some code that you just have to know to type. It's self equals square bracket super space in it with coder colon ad coder square bracket semicolon and return self semicolon. And then between these lines, we can put our code to initialize the variables. So self dot ellipse x equals 20 semicolon and self dot ellipse y equals 20 semicolon. 
And now in our draw rect method, we can change the numbers for our old ellipse to use the variables instead. So now that we have our variables, we can actually do our animation. So go back into our init method, and I'm going to add square bracket ns timer space scheduled timer with blah blah blah. So we need to pick the one here with uh, the word target and selector in it. So the parameters to fill in for this are 0 0.03 tab self tab at selector and in parentheses timer did fire tab nil tab and yes in all capitals. So what this means is to wait for 0 0.03 seconds and then iOS should run some code in a method called timer did fire which we'll write that in a second and then it'll keep repeating that over and over every 0 0.03 seconds. So 0.03 seconds is 30 milliseconds which is about 33 times per second which is a pretty good speed to get smooth animations. So the second part of this is we need to write that timer did fire method. So we'll put that here after our init method and we'll say dash and in parentheses the word void and then timer did fire and then in curly braces we'll write our code which is going to run every 0 0.03 seconds. So I want to make the ellipse move down and to the right. So first I'll update the variables like this self dot ellipse x equals self dot ellipse x plus one semicolon and self dot ellipse y equals self dot ellipse y plus one semicolon and then we say square bracket self set needs display square bracket semicolon to tell ios to redraw the screen so let's run that and see how it's going ah perfect so we can see the ellipse moving across the screen. So let's make something happen when we touch the screen. To do this, we need to add a new special method. I'll put mine right after the draw rect method. So type a dash here and then start typing touches. And we can choose to do something either when someone begins touching the screen or they finish touching the screen or just when they move their finger while they're still touching the screen. So I'm going to do something when a new touch begins by choosing this one. So in here, we can do the same kind of things we can do in our timer did fire method that we made earlier. So here, I'm going to move my ellipse back to the left edge whenever there's a touch. And then we have to say uh, self set needs display again at the end to make sure iOS will redraw the screen. So let's try that out. And every time I click, it's uh, running the code and moving the ellipse back to the left side. So we can draw things and move them around. But let's add a little more complicated behavior. So we're going to use an if statement. So I'm going to go back to my timer did fire method and add some if statement logic here. So I want to say if and in parentheses self dot ellipse x is greater than 300 then in curly braces self dot ellipse x equals zero semicolon. So if the ellipse gets too far to the right past 300 then we'll move it back to the left edge. Let me show another example in our touches begin method. So first we need to write a little bit of code here to find out the position of where the touch is happening. So for this, we say UI touch star touch equals in square brackets touches any object and a semicolon and CG point touch position equals in square brackets touch location in view colon self and a semicolon. So in both of these lines, we're creating a temporary variable here. And we say what type of data the variable is going to hold and we give it a name. 
and then we do something to get the value we want from something else we already have. So what's happening here is iOS gives us some touches whenever this event happens. And there might be more than one because you can touch with multiple fingers. So since we're not worrying about multi-touch in this app, we're just going to take any touch that's there. And then we'll take that touch and find out its position on the screen. So now that we know where the touch is, let's check if it's inside of the rectangle that we drew earlier. So this is going to be a big if statement. So the rectangle is at 10, 10, and it's 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. So we need to check that the touch is between the sides of the rectangle, both horizontally and vertically. So in our if statement, the horizontal part is touch location dot x is greater than 10 and touch location dot x is less than 100. And then the vertical part is touch location dot y is greater than 10 and touch location dot y is less than 100. So there are four simple comparisons we're making here and combining them with and, which is in objective C is two ampersands. And then I'm going to move our code to put the ellipse back to the left into the if statement. So it'll only happen when we touch the rectangle. And if we touch anywhere else, nothing's going to happen. So we've gone over a lot of stuff. You might want to stop here and see what you can make with shapes and colors and animation and touch events. But if you want to learn a little bit more, I'll show one more thing, how to draw images. So let's find an image first. I like to use a site called openclipart.org since everything there is legal to use in your app. So let's search for maybe a unicorn. And there, let's grab that pegacorn image. Looks like a good one. So I'm going to drag that to my desktop. So here's where it goes in our project. I'm going to drag this to the demo game folder. And then here, make sure this copy items if needed box is checked and then hit OK. So the way this works in iOS is you have to load your images before you can draw them. So to do that, we need to make a variable to hold the image for us after we load it. So let's go back to demo game.h and add a new at property. This one's a UI image star and then a name. I'll call mine pegacorn image and then a semicolon at the end. You know that by now, right? Okay. Then back in demo game.m in our init method, we'll load it like this. Pegacorn image equals square bracket UI image, image named colon, and then an at sign. And then in double quotes, the name of the image file. I'm going to copy mine here so I don't mistype it. So now we can draw it down in our draw rect method with square bracket self dot pegacorn image, draw at point colon, and then CG rect make parenthesis, and then the X and Y positions to draw it at. So those are the basics of making an iOS app with graphics and animation. If you haven't already been following along, why don't you go try it out and see what you can make? I'd love to see what you all come up with or hear if you have any questions or problems making your own apps. So you can find me on Twitter or at buildsomethingawesome.org. And thanks for watching. Have fun.